good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video tonight we have the june 18th edition of monday night raw review <laughs> So Monday Night Raw opened up with the GM Kurt Angle coming to the ring talking about money in the bank. He was talking about how proud he was that both the men and women from Raw capitalized in their money in the bank match. You know, Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman both won. They were both on Monday Night Raw, so he was talking about how proud he was of that. Then... Out came Alexa Bliss, and you know, she was cutting a promo, and Kurt Angle would reveal that it would be Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss at Extreme Rules. You know, she was going to invoke her rematch clause from her contract to fight Alexa. Then out comes Ronda Rousey, and Alexa is talking crap on her. You know, guys, she was talking about how she's a, you know, unexperienced rookie and just trashing the piss out of her. And then Ronda just goes ham, guys. She just beats the hell out of Alexa with the case that was there on the little table. She beat the hell out of Kurt Angle. She beat the hell out of the referee. She she beat the hell out of another referee. She was going ham, just beating the shit out of everybody. She ended up putting Alexa Bliss through the table that was in the middle of the ring. I absolutely love this segment. I thought Ronda Rousey was beautiful. She just came out there, you know, strictly business, no smiling, no BS. Came right out, just destroyed everybody. And I, I tweeted, I even said, this is the Ronda Rousey we've been waiting for. You know, this is the character we want to see of Ronda Rousey. Just a badass, just kicking everybody beating the hell out of everybody and that's exactly what she did i was totally shocked did not see that coming and she is now suspended for 30 days and after this segment she was interviewed by renee young and she said that when she gets back from her 30 day suspension she was gonna beat that uh what'd she say i can't even remember what she said but it was like beat that pink haired hoe's ass or something like that or she didn't say hoe but you know you get the point out comes seth rollins for the intercontinental championship open challenge and out comes Dolph Ziggler my boy and Drew McIntyre I was very interested in this I was like oh my god is it going to be Dolph Ziggler or Drew McIntyre it would be Dolph Ziggler and this match was very you know fast paced and nice between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler and guys we have a brand new intercontinental champion guys I was freaking marking out everybody knows how big of a Ziggler fan I am I was absolutely losing my marbles guys he, he, he rolls up Seth they get in a roll up sequence and we have a new Intercontinental Champion, and it's kind of weird. It came out of nowhere, out of left field. Seth Rollins loses his Intercontinental Championship. The best reign with a title going on in WWE right now just gets dropped out of nowhere to Ziggler. Literally made no sense, guys, but I'm all for it. You know, I'm a huge Ziggler fan, and I don't know where we go from here. I guess Seth Rollins needs to move on to the Universal Championship like we thought. Uh, you know, Ziggler and McIntyre would beat down Rollins after the matchup. But uh, I wish there was less commercials. I feel like there was way too many commercials in that matchup. I feel like it would have been a lot better had there not been so many commercials. And I heard a lot of people say live at the event that uh, it was a whole lot better in person. So, um, again, I wish, you know, less commercials. But Dolph Ziggler, new Intercontinental Champion. After that match, Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre would cut a promo backstage, and then we would cut to the ring where Bobby Roode would take on Kurt Hawkins. You guys already know what happened. Bobby Roode would defeat Kurt Hawkins in a match, and there was not much to this just to continue uh, you know, the losing streak of Kurt Hawkins and to give us some filler on Monday Night Raw. Next, the Money in the Bank winner, Braun Strowman, would come to the ring, and you know, he, he looks crazy as hell with that briefcase, guys. He just doesn't look natural at all. But he cuts a promo on Brock Lesnar, says if he ever see, shows his face on Monday Night Raw, he will definitely cash in that contract and win the Universal Championship. Out comes one of my favorites, Kevin Owens, to the ring. You know, he comes out on the stage, and he's talking about uh, Braun Strowman. You know, he look, he's beat up as hell. He's got his elbow wrapped up. He can barely walk and talk, and he's just in total pain. He wants to congratulate Braun Strowman. You know, he says he deserves the contract. He says that Braun needs strategy to cash in and that Kevin Owens can help out with that. He gets in the ring to shake his hand. Uh, Braun Strowman pulls him really close. You know what I'm saying? Picks him up to try to power slam, but Kevin Owens does power out. That would be the end of the segment. Uh, it's sort of just a tragedy that Kevin Owens is just sort of floating around now. I wish that, you know, they could give him some sort of direction. The guy is literally one of the most talented in the entire world. So, you know what? We need Kevin Owens to get himself a push. Cut backstage, and we got Sasha Banks and Bailey. You know, Sasha sulking in the in the locker right there. Bailey comes up and tells her to stop sulking, and you know she's talking. They're all friends, whatever. She says that they need to put the past behind them, and that she's uh, you know facing the riot squad later on tonight, and she needs Sasha Banks in her corner. You know to forget about all of their past. Uh, 
confirmations and you know what I'm saying, getting in fights and all that jazz. She wants to put that behind them and she wants her to team up with her tonight to take on the Riot Squad. And in fact, she would agree and you know what, they shake hands or whatever and we have Bailey and Sasha taking on Riot Squad later on. Out comes Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt taking on Rhino and Slater. You know, not much of a match at all. Just some more Monday Night Raw filler garbage, something that we don't care about. But, uh, you know, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt would pick up the win. And the B-Team came over the Jumbotron and did cut a promo on them or something. Sort of intim like uh, mocking, you know, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. They uh, dressed up like them, cut a similar style promo on them. I didn't really hear what they said, but it wasn't very much. And then uh, that was before the match even started. But Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt would pick up the win. Cut to backstage and we have Kurt Angle and Baron Corbin. They got a call from Stephanie McMahon. Angle gets on the phone and says he'll announce something later on but he's got to make some tough decisions. And Stephanie, over the phone, you hear Kurt say something like, and yes, I'll run it by Constable Corbin, uh, saying that, uh, you know, Stephanie is telling Kurt to make sure that he involves Constable Corbin and uh, gets his take on what he's going to announce. Cut to the ring, and out comes Jinder Mahal and his opponent, Chad Gable, already in the ring waiting for him. I think this is total bull. More filler for Monday Night Raw. My goodness, this is the third time in two months we've seen this matchup. Not very much of a matchup anyways. I think it was under five minutes. Jinder Mahal did defeat Chad Gable, cutting a promo before the match. Didn't even care what he said. You know, this man just lost to Roman. He keeps losing, so why am I going to listen to him? Uh, this was pretty much nothing. I hate they have nothing for Chad Gable. Chad Gable's very talented. He had, you know, he's such a great in-ring performer. I wish they had something for him, but Jinder Mahal picks up the dub. Next up, we had Bailey and Sasha Banks taking on the Riot Squad, and uh, this match wasn't much of anything. The Riot Squad would pick up the win after the match. Sasha Banks would be pissed off at Bailey. Bailey tried to, you know, get up on her and try to console her. She wouldn't have it. She shoved her back. She shoved her back and finally shoves her to the ground, walks back to the back. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial. We're still in the hallway. Sasha's still pissed off. Bailey says, don't walk away from me. Sasha's like, you know, don't tell me what to do. They get in each other's faces and then Bailey uh, attacks Sasha from behind and they beat the crap out of each other, but Sasha does come up on top. You know, they're throwing shit around and stuff, hitting each other, throwing people, uh, throwing, you know, catering at each other and stuff. They finally hit the ground and uh, Sasha walks off while Bailey's just laying there. My guess is that we're going to have a match at Extreme Rules between these two and I just wish that uh, this was the Raw Championship picture instead of just some all feud in the back like we've always seen between them. I think we're going to get some sort of stipulation match between them at Extreme Rules, but I guess we'll have to see. Next up, Kurt Angle does come to the ring, says he got off the phone with Stephanie McMahon, and then he's found out when Brock Lesnar will defend his championship, and they need a new n number one contender to fight Brock. Out comes the big dog Roman Reigns. You know, he says that he beat Brock Lesnar at the Greatest Royal Rumble, and he's the uncrowned Universal Champion. You know, yada, 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 going in at him. Then out comes Bobby Lashley. He comes out and then he calls Roman Reigns or he calls Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns he says I can beat Roman I mean, I mean Brock Lesnar and it was it was terrible guys it was just truly a fail on the microphone right there says that uh, Roman needs to step aside and let uh, somebody that can beat Brock Lesnar beat Brock Lesnar thought that was some weird wording and uh, I don't know, just just awful. Then out comes the revival for some odd reason, and they're like, you know, top guys are standing in our way, and you know, yada yada yada. We want to cult to cap whatever the hell. Uh, send their careers to the top of the card, and uh, they have a tag team match right there: Roman Reigns versus uh, or Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. Going against the Revival in a tag team match. We had a rather quick match. Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley spent most of the match trying to one-up each other. You know, I was actually surprised that the Revival actually got some offense in in this matchup. Of course, Bobby Lashley would win the match by a spear. And, you know, they're trying to play with the fact that that's Roman Reigns' move and all this mess. But uh, they would win this match. And uh, that would pretty much be it. I actually forgot to add that during the Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, and Kurt Angle segment that Kurt Angle said that there will be a multi-man match at Extreme Rules to decide who will fight Brock Lesnar next for the Universal Championship. He said it will be a multi-man match and that Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns would for sure be two of the many men that will participate. So we cut to backstage and Finn Balor's talking to Kurt Angle and he says that he will do whatever it takes to be one of those many men in that matchup so that he can win back his Universal Championship. Ship. Constable Corbin would then walk up and say, you know, uh, please, you hurt your little shoulder. You held the title for like 24 hours. Yada, yada, yada. You better be lucky. I wasn't around. I would have taken it from you and whatever, so on and so forth. Up walks Kevin Owens, and he says that Finn Balor doesn't deserve it. 
as well, yada, yada, yada. But Finn Balor says, you know what, I don't care what either of you think. And he turns to Kevin Owens and says, you don't even, I don't listen to you because you can't even realize when danger is right behind you. Braun Strowman would, of course, be behind him. I thought that was a good little phrase right there from Finn Balor. Braun Strowman was standing right behind uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens would then run over to the other side. And, uh, you know, everybody was like, you know, what are you doing here, Braun? And he says, you know, I got the contract. I go where I want, when I want, because this contract allows me to. And uh, Braun Strowman says, I'm sticking up for my buddy Finn right here. If you two want to go in a tag team match any day of the week, I got it. And, you know, he implied that it would be Finn Balor and Braun taking on Corbin and Kevin Owens. But then uh, Kurt Angle was like, I'm losing control. He walks off. And then them two walk off. And Finn Balor's standing there just smiling like a moron. And Braun Strowman's sitting there as well. And that ended the segment. So after that, we cut to the ring. We have a match between my boy No Way Jose taking on Mojo Rawley. I feel like we haven't seen Mojo Rawley in forever. But anyways, uh, not much of a match again. I did not expect this, but Mojo Rawley defeats No Way Jose in a nothing match. Just more filler garbage. Mojo Rawley gets on the mic after the matchup in an interview. And he says he used to be about all about getting hyped and now he's all about getting focused and staying focused so that was the whole point of this and he walks off cut backstage and it's sasha Banks storming off getting in her car putting her suitcase in bailey tries to come up and says i'm not done with you yet sasha sasha says well i'm done with you and i'm done being your friend gets in her car and drives off Bailey's sitting there, you know, she's banging on the window trying to chase the car, throws her water bottle at the car as Sasha drives off, and that was the end of this segment, so. Cut to the ring, and we have an Elias concert, and he actually sang a pretty good song, guys. I actually liked it a lot. It was, uh, What Would Elias Do?, and I thought it was pretty clever. You know, it was played well. Elias is pretty good with coming up with that stuff, and he did well tonight. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, very good lyrics and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I don't think anything else happened. You know, he just sung his song, you know, threw some shade at some people, and uh, that was pretty much it. Cut to an interview backstage, and we got Seth freaking Rollins on the microphone, and he is talking about, you know, he wants his Intercontinental Championship back. No excuses. He says that Dolph Ziggler, you know, just plain beat him. He says that Drew McIntyre is a problem and that next week he is going to invoke his rematch clause for the Intercontinental Championship. So next week on Monday Night Raw, we're going to have Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship in a rematch. Main event time, and we have a tag team match between Constable Corbin and Kevin Owens taking on Finn Balor and Braun Strowman. I did not know when they talked about this earlier that this would be the main event. I was totally confused on that. I thought it was next week or something considering KO, you know, had taken all those bumps in the ladder match uh, the night prior. So, uh, anyways, we had this tag team match. It was a pretty solid matchup. Constable Corbin wrestling in the gear like Corporate Kane, I guess, and uh, that was sort of weird to me, wrestling in the suit and the button-up shirt or whatever. But uh, this was a solid little tag team match. You know, Constable Corbin would go on to end of days Finn Balor and pick up the victory. Did not expect that at all. But Kevin Owens and Corbin do win the matchup, and that ends Monday Night Raw. I did not expect that at all. I thought that Braun and Finn would easily win here, but I guess they're trying to keep Constable Corbin strong, but they're pooping on their new Money in the Bank winner. He didn't eat the pin, but still you're pinning Finn Balor, and I don't know, man, that just sucks, but uh, that pretty much does it for your entire Monday Night Raw review, guys, thank you so very much for watching, I think that uh, Monday Night Raw started off very hot with the first hour, you know, Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler, Ronda Rousey, I thought the first hour was great, and then after that, it dipped off horribly, and then they picked it back up for the main event. I actually enjoyed the main event, but that pretty much does it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you enjoyed Monday Night Raw tonight. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE, WWE figure-related videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.